I hear men getting dating advice from other men. This is what I hear most. I hate it. Would you mind telling me the story of how you first met? We're really too busy. Uh, we are both old rock and rollers, and uh, we met backstage at the Fillmore East. He was working there. I was hanging out. Okay. And how long ago was this? About 45, 46 years ago. Final questions. 45 years in, what's your favorite thing about him? Everything. What's your favorite thing about her? She puts up with me. Okay. What are you most excited for in the future? Spending time with each other. Why? Yeah. Okay. The time we have left spending it with each other. Why? Like, tell me you have not heard that so much. When, like movies, sitcoms, other things. I, I remember thinking like, that's interesting. Find a woman who puts up with you. Find a woman who puts up with you. So literally find a woman who thinks that you are a pain in the butt to her. But she'll, she'll put up with it. Like, do you understand how toxic that messaging is? And yet that is, I see it all the time. I, I, I actually like try to find some other clips of TV. I was like, okay, I don't have time for this. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Tell me that you don't know. You haven't heard that for so long. Find a woman who puts up with you. What? That is like, like that is like coded. Like at the very least, it's like just be like a, a pain in her butt. But it's also like, hello, domestic violence. <laughs> like. We wonder why so many men are like, I don't understand why you don't want to get married. Like, what I love about what's happening right now is that women are finally like, I don't want to put up with this man. I don't even understand why she wants to spend time together with him. When he literally, she said she loves everything about him. And his, was, and by the way, he was all like, oh, we don't have time for this. Uh. And then she's all like, God, he's so, grumpy old men are the worst. God, that like they already like and they and that starts at a young age a lot of men are already grumpy old men in their 30s <laughs> right but he's just like mm. and then as soon as that man says what is like um what's your favorite thing about him after 40 years she goes he goes she goes everything and he perks up now all of a sudden he's not hunchy oh and then what well, like you couldn't think of one thing man she said everything, and you couldn't think of one thing other than she puts up with you. And yet, that thing came across my feed on Twitter, and it was in response to another video of, and, and, and I, I don't know, that, that account I think is like in, in a red pill account, because under that video was all these men. I'm like, that's what marriage is about. Why do we need to get back to the old days? Um, and also, they've taken away my green screen option. I don't know what's going on, but I have to use my hand or some other stupid thing. I love this, but the ma vast majority of relationships today are superficial and depend on money. When the money goes, she goes with it. Shut up. Like, all the comments under that were like, that made me cry. Uh, that's what men are looking for. That's what men are looking for. Someone to put up with their BS. Someone to take care of them, give them their body, almost die giving them children, doing all this labor. Oh my God. That is why they just don't understand why we do not want to marry them because men, men like that do not add value to our life. So I'm going to actually go over um, an article I read yesterday because this is actually, and it is, it's, it's so, I haven't read this book yet, but I love this author based just on what she's saying about why divorce is skyrocketing, okay? And men are going to die alone. And that is just the natural consequences of having that mentality of find a woman who will put up with you. Why should we have to? Why don't you put up with us? You literally divorce us as soon as we get sick. You're six times more likely. Why do we have to put up with you? So this was for Salon. A man will, and this is so good, y'all. This is why a lot of women don't like, this is why a lot of women actually find men on the left or in the middle or like, you know, progressive men to be un, <laughs> to be actually worse than men who are more traditional. Cause at least men who are more traditional will actually do something. You know, one of my friends, she was like, she realized that she's jealous of her parents' relationship because, um, at least he's doing like half of the labor, right? 
she may do this, this, and this, and this, but he does all the finances. He does that. Like, they actually know what the division of labor is. And even though it may be gendered, he's still doing a lot. And she was like, oh my God. Like, and then she realized that in her marriage, she is involved in literally everything. Everything. Every single thing in that home, she has some hand in because he's so unreliable. And then she, and whereas in her parents who are more like traditional, whatever, it is, it is very clear who does what and that her dad actually did a lot. So I would argue that a, one, like a lot of the, uh, a, a lot of women get fooled thinking that they're marrying a feminist. But if you are not a feminist in the home with your actions, you are worse than just like the than, than men who won't call themselves. You're way worse, bro. You're a hypocrite. So this, a man will say he's a feminist, but he doesn't wipe the count, the counters. <laughs> and this is a, this is, this, this author is talking about the beauty of divorce. So my, one of my mutuals, um, Heather, oh, she goes by Hope Headley. I'm going to um, tag her. She was, she coined like the great divorce, right? We are in the middle of the beginning stages of the great divorce. I actually really wish that we had divorce registries rather than like wedding registries because of the wedding registry. Like, why are you giving people who are combining income a lot of money, but you completely leave, especially women, like to fend for themselves when a lot of them are left almost homeless after men, um, you know, don't give them the amount of money they deserve for all the, f- the free labor that they did, right? So a lot of women, especially if they become these trad wives, end up getting so screwed with divorce, which is why so many women are trapped in marriages because these men are like, no, 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 you don't have to work. You don't have to work. No, 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 it's okay. And a lot of women don't want to work. They want to stay home and take care of the kids because that is work. That is legit work, but these men don't pay them for that work. So they have nothing in savings when and if they find that they want to leave. And that's again why I think money is so important when we're having any conversations about any freedom. You know, when it comes to feminism, when it comes to all the systems of oppression, right? White supremacy culture, like ableism, like all the things. Money is a very important part of the conversation because that without access to resources, at which i.e. money, how are you going to do? You're trapped. This author, um, Liz Lenz, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, is coming out with a book says, This this American Ex-Wife, How I Ended My Marriage and Started My Life. And this interview is really fun. And they talk about the timing of this book is so important because right now, there's even like the Washington Post editorial board, you know, is uh, is begging women to marry. Like there's all there's this huge campaign for women to get married. Get married. Get, just get married. David Brooks. Oh, I hate that guy. Um, you know, just get married. Just get married. It's fine. I love this. Just get married. It's fine. That's what they're saying. And so she gives some historical context to this being like, look, there's a lot of, so we can go back to, you know, the Jimmy Carter, whatever, uh, that even in the 1920s when there are high, high profile flapper divorces and everybody's like, oh my God, society's crumbling. Women just need to get married. We've been here before. If forcing women to get married solved our social problems, we, we, we wouldn't be here again. But, but there are a growing number of women opting out of marriage um, all, all together and even opting out of the dating pool now. And it's highly destabilizing to people, especially those who make policy and look at trends. And it's like, my dude, just fund social safety net. <laughs> she goes into the whole gray divorce thing, which I've talked about. So in the gray divorce thing, one of the biggest segments of, of divorce is gray divorce. All these retirees... We're told if you just stick it out, then you'll be happy in the end. They're getting to the end and they're like, I'm not happy. Uh, And this is the women mostly. They're saying, this is not how I'm going to spend my one wild and precious life. We were also forced to see it in the pandemic. All of a sudden, women were forced to stay in their homes with their kids and their partners who supposedly, supposedly loved them. But he was locking himself in the office doing Zoom work while you're doing homeschooling and managing the kids and like also doing your work and cooking for everybody. And I will say, I do think the pandemic is what pushed women over the edge. It's interesting because I know that a lot of women were really, really lonely during the pandemic, a lot of single women. And the women who, a lot of women who were not single, who are married were like, oh my God, I just wish I could be at a home all by myself. 
or at least just me and my children. But even even then, it's like having no childcare, having no school, like literally. But any even so, seeing their husbands completely not care and have no excuse for not stepping up is very enlightening. She said, instead of reckoning with inequality, we're, we're just trying to push women back into the positions of servitude, which is why this whole trad wife thing is so big. That with a rollback of reproduction rights, it's also tied to gender reactions that says tra- a trans woman is not a woman. That is seriously, you want to shove women back into a box. And that box is a heterosexual lifestyle. I mean, they're really brilliant in their whole approach to trying to save uh, this foundation of uh, capitalism is a heterosexual marriage. Why, like, why do y'all think they're obsessed I mean, among just hate being hateful and all those things. This is one reason why they're obsessed with attacking the trans community. It's about this, y'all. Besides hate and bigotry and all those things. And, uh, you know, the Christian right and fundamentalism and all those things. And just white supremacy culture. Because it's all tied, y'all. It's all tied up. But this is, this is why if you fall into the anti-trans pipeline, you are literally, you're, you're, you're fighting against feminism and if you don't agree with me that's fine but do not write it in my comments you will be blocked and deleted i'm commenting i do not allow turf comments in my in on my space in my space she goes on to say if we were really serious about marriage we would be making divorce have easier access studies have shown where divorce where, where divorce is easier family life gets better women make more money kids are more likely to stay in school there are lower rates of domestic violence If you wanted better relationships and better society, you would give women a choice. Not only a choice in in terms of reproductive, this is why they're rolling back reproductive rights, but a choice like making divorce. That's why they're going after divorce, y'all. No fault divorce. They're going after, they don't want you to be able to leave men. This is what I love right here. But that's not what we're doing, right? We're telling women that men are sad and nobody's having babies. So just get married. This is why I go after the whole lonely male crisis all the time. Fork you, we don't care if you're lonely. This, them wanting us to be obsessed with men's schmooicide rates. And I'm not saying schmooicide isn't serious. I lost my cousin to it. I care a lot about men's mental health more than they care about it themselves. But at this point, mm-mm. we are not marrying you because you're lonely. We are lonelier in marriages and relationships with men who do not see us as human beings than you will ever feel on your own. There's like no, knowing that someone literally hates you and doesn't see you as a human being. That is such a lonely experience. I have never felt so alone in my life, even though I was single most of my life, with the exception of a couple very short relationships until I was 42. I have spent mo- most of my adult years alone. And I've never felt so lonely as being in a relationship with a man who hated me. Never, never. And a man who cut me off from myself and my community as a way to control me. So the interviewer asked, well, how, does, how did the pandemic break up marriage? Even though they don't really have uh, great statistics yet on how the pandemic affected divorce, but she talked uh, more, she just talked to this, she, she, this is why storytelling is so important. Because, I mean, I swear to God, statistics are always often skewed, right? But this woman talked to divorce lawyers and anecdotes of women who've been divorced. Um, and she even talked, even for women who, whose, mar- whose marriage is traditionally a fine institution, upper class white women, they're marrying upper class white men. They have money, right? So even the women who have money, they have like, you know what I mean? Uh, it may actually financially benefit them to be married. And also they have access to money um, if they weren't married. Those women hate, <laughs> hate every minute. <laughs> people I, and she's basically saying the pandemic made people realize uh what well, we don't have a lot of time on this earth why am i giving this man 5 10 15 20 30 40 years of my life when he doesn't even think i'm a human being so then they go into housework a lot of your work focuses on housework and the unequal sharing of it your ex-husband frankly sounds like a slob why does housework weigh so heavily on marriage and this, again, is why men are always like, you just stop, it's nag, nag, nag. You know, they, they, they think it's being petty, you know, like that <laughs> they minimize it. She goes into why, why it matters. If it's one of those little things we think we can make equal, then you get into marriage and realize, oh, this is not equal at all. It's a good example of dishonesty of pro-marriage rhetoric. Again, even though I'm married and I love my marriage, I will never be pro-marriage in general because the majority of the time, this is what happens right here. This right here. 
again, it's not what always happens, but I want women to see that this is most likely what's going to happen so that you don't just like buy into this thing like, I'm a loser if I'm not married. No, you're not. You're not a loser if you're not married. You have, you, if, you're, if you refuse to settle for, for, for men who don't treat you well, who are, whatever, if you are being very picky, good for you. That's brave. I want us to start seeing single women as brave. They are, they are prioritizing their peace their their life literally their their life this is a life and death decision their finances their happiness they're prioritizing that than taking a risk like this because this is a big risk and this is usually what you're getting especially with these men who are like oh my god i'm a feminist and they're a feminist in their community just like the search and rescue dudes and the firemen are heroes in the community and they are nightmares at home but because they think they're heroes, they're actually worse than men who admit that they suck. So you're told it's just two people building a home and a life together, but the work of the home is a stark example of inequality, which is, uh, which is supposed to be a partnership. And that's why, you know, to me, that's why I'm talking about this man is supposed to be your best friend. Screw like, oh, the schmegs is good and like, oh, the rock. No, like this is, but like to me, marriage should be fundamentally about this is your best friend. This man makes you feel as safe and secure and respected and seen and cherished and loved as your most amazing closest friend. Now, if all you have is toxic friends, then I, I, I strongly suggest that you work on that first. So then you actually have something to compare these men to because I'm telling you, I really don't think I would have, um, I don't think I would have dated, I don't think that I would have known what real love felt like if my friend Liz hadn't shown me like she was my standard. So when I met Anthony, I was like, oh my God, literally, I, I feel like I'm with Liz all the time. All the time. This is weird. Is this just like a male Liz? <laughs> like, you know? And, and they love each other. They get along each, with each other well. That's also very important. If your healthiest friend who knows you and loves you the most and is always going to call you on your stuff and has a very high standard, if they love the person you're dating, um, again, this person can trick people or whatever, but... That's, that's something you should consider. Being married to a man adds seven hours of labor to women's week. I would say that's the minimum on average. Again, this is, this is, this, I, this is not my marriage. <laughs> In fact, Anthony does way more work around the home than I do. If it, anybody is married and your husband actually gives a crap about unpacking patriarchy, a really good book, if, I'm sure you've probably heard of it, but Fair Play is a good place to start because that's where you start having these conversations about how much time this takes, the, how, how much thinking it all requires. I really wish they had a book called, like the International Fair Play book because when you add things like immigration and language and all, these, and, and all those things to it, it's like a whole new deck. But anyway. But that's seven hours of labor that, that he is not doing. It's such a sh stark statistic. Marriage is where the personal hits the political. Marriage is where the personal hits the political. Again, I don't care if a man says that he's a feminist. I don't care if he votes, you know, down the line for all like, I don't care. If you are truly a feminist and you're a man and you follow me, which I think maybe like six or seven or eight percent of the people following me are men, I want you to understand your feminism starts in the home. We don't need you at protests. We don't need you doing any. If literally the first job that you have right now is create that equity and that respect and that division of labor that's fair in your home. That's where this work starts. And if you're not doing that, then you're full of crap and you're just doing it for optics. We think that we're so egalitarian. A man will say he's a feminist and he doesn't wipe the counters. You can say you support women, but you've never picked up a fork and vacuum. It doesn't matter what you say because in your home, you're still benefiting from the eight unpaid labor of women. Okay, so let's get back to what, how the pandemic played into this. We're just now seeing the ripple effects. People were un unable to move out in 2020, right? And I would say that a lot of divorces are not happening right now strictly based on the housing crisis and recession. And, you know, again, a lot of it just comes down to money. But she's saying here that, you know, that, that, there's a delayed impact of like, it was during the pandemic. And not that the pandemic's even over. Okay, like, hope you're being careful. But, you know, during 
the lockdowns and stuff that's where like these men's true colors and true hatred and disrespect for their wives really came out you couldn't unsee it these women could not unsee it after the uh, those lockdowns and so it takes a while to get a divorce it takes a while to sit with this new information it is so hard to see the truth it's so painful to see the truth but once you see it you can't unsee it you can't. Maybe they went to therapy and tried to fix it. And it's like, okay, now it's 2024. <laughs> Women are like, okay, this kid's not fixable. And look at this. They started to see that their hopes and dreams were never going to be as important as his. Okay, so look at this. So then the, they uh, they asked this, uh, the author, you know, how we've had so many discussions over the years with men who just refuse to take this seriously. They write it off like it's petty BS. Um to worry about what who does more vacuuming which is vacuuming come on get over it blah, right but there's so much psychic damage that it does to women uh, sit with that psychic i would add physical damage okay this is what i'm saying this is life and death these men are killing us men who treat us like this are literally killing us look at this it's a loss of time if you're constantly picking his socks out of the couch my ex would take the trash from the trash can and instead of taking the trash outside to the bin, he would leave it on this bench in the kitchen and he'd claim he'd get, and then, you know, he'd get it uh, too late. Okay, <laughs> am I reading that wrong? Whatever. He would never get it to, la okay, later. He'd never get to later. So who does that work when he forgets? Hmm? It was me. Always me, coming in and being hit with the smell of rot and garbage. Sometimes it would fall, and then there'd be trash on the floor. And we would have these fights, and he would say, it's just a bag of trash, let it go. Gaslighting. I cannot let it go. You show complete disregard for me as a person because you're not thinking about who has to do this. That's what it's about, not seeing this person, this invisible, the person who's coming behind and taking care of all this stuff, the psychic impact of that does so much damage to a woman. And I love this right here. It's these tiny violences. Very good choice of words. It's not the big, big things. I talk to so many women and yes, the big things can and do destroy marriage. But I wanted to write a book about how he wasn't violent. He, you know, okay, whatever. Um, I wanted to write about the ways that these small violences, like not paying attention to housework, leaving the bag of trash, really add up. They, they trap in, uh, the trap in the dishwasher doesn't empty itself. The laundry doesn't fold itself. That bag of trash doesn't get taken out to the trash by itself. That is a person who does that. And I am that person. Like you, says, it you said, it takes a psychic toll. I am not going to spend my life, oh, this is so good, training a man to see me as a human being. And that right there is what it's all about. Oh my God, look at my dog right now. Okay, even though I don't have the green screen effect, I kind of like that Moe's can be in this. So you can... <laughs> I'll talk to women and they'll say, my husband doesn't do that either. But they, then I trained him after 20 years and I'm like, he's a man, not a golden retriever. I want to do other things with my life than train a grown man to wipe counters. So um, I've talked about this before, but I actually really want women to start having these conversations with men before they marry them. Or at least like look for this. If like, I am not going to teach a man how to see me as a human being, right? But I also want to... Be very clear that if you are a woman and you marry a cishet man, that man, you are going to both be facing patriarchy in your marriage every day. It's going to show up. It can't not show up. So the only reason why I was willing to get married is because when I met Anthony, it was very clear out of the gate that this man saw me as a human being and understood patriarchy like it's like it's like I would never date a man who has who is in feminism 101 mm -mm, not doing it I have been uh, literally t studying and reading about and living and fighting and doing all like my, I'm I'm so immersed in this work for decades now there's no way I'm going to to teach a man the basic 101 but I wh why I want to bring this up is that if you think I don't care how 
how much this man has been unpacking this stuff, you will, I, I do not believe in, and I, and this doesn't just come from my own experience, but lots of women I know who are married to men who really are doing this work and unpacking this stuff and facing it all and seeing it and, and questioning themselves and taking action, right? It's not going to just never show up. You will never, ever find, find a man, in my opinion, who doesn't have any work to do in terms, because it, it, it's going to come up in the marriage. If they're not married, then they can just do all this stuff to support women, but they're, they're not even going to know the, how deeply this is and until they're living in a house with a woman. And I didn't realize how deep this was until I lived in a house with a man. I was like, wait a sec. I literally, just to give you an example, I caught myself when we first got married doing his laundry. I'm like, what am I doing? And like, it's not that, you know, like I just needed my laundry done, but I was like, well, I should do his too. And I should fold it. And I was like, wait a second, where's this coming from? I grew up with a single mom. I wasn't even like indoctrinated to do this in my home, but all the movies and all the other things. And so it's not that we don't, it's not that I don't do things for him, but I, I caught myself thinking you should fill in the blank because that's what a wife does. I didn't know. I've never been married. And so I catch myself wanting to perform wife crap not not nearly as as much as like maybe the average woman because again I didn't see this growing up right not in my home which is honestly the best gift I was ever given to not see a man oppress a woman in my home not not in not in my mother's home I never saw she never dated anyone while she was raising us until I was almost out of the house so if you think this is never going to come up there is not some sort of these conversations aren't going to come up that you're not going to face like there is going to be some teaching involved right but what's so great is that Anthony watches all my videos and he reads all the comments and he's like in like like you know doctorate level boot camp just by listening to women every day all day and then seeing and like you know what I mean and so that's what I'm saying if you if you have a husband who wants to unpack this stuff just you know you don't have to teach him I mean you're gonna have to have hard conversation but the first thing he can do is go and listen to women just listen watch learn listen because they're like in like kindergarten and we're in like grad school and none of us should have to train men to treat us like human beings because we have better stuff to do with our time right? Not our job. So then she goes in about how being a single mom is great. Being a divorced is amazing. She said she realized she has more free time and I'm not doing all the labor. She even gives an example of how she has dog and one who eats an entire box, box of shredded wheats and then craps all over the floor and still her house is cleaner <laughs> with this wolf in her house than a man. And I've talked about this before. We're told that marriage is hard work, but who's doing that work if it was both doing that work maybe but who's hiring the babysitter the therapist reading the books about how to better communicate making the date nights and making sure that we have clean clothes for the date I don't think any relationship should be predicated on my inequality call me crazy love this and then the, the, the interviewer brings up like you know in the American discourse of like Ugh, marriage is such a burden to men just take my wife please and now because again patriarchy just shifts right? It, it adapts. And so now they're like, oh crap, we need a different strategy. They've got onto us. So now they're trying to weaponize our empathy. Everything is changing. Now all we hear about poor men being so one way. We're asked to worry about what will happen to the man without the woman. And she's like, I don't know, just go to fork and therapy like the rest of us. And then she talks about how there's all this, that's what's so funny about these jokes about, you know, all these men are like, I don't want to get married. Yeah, right, bro. It's really the women who don't want it. And then she goes back to why they're pushing marriage. It's deeply destabilizing our tax base is predicated on one man one woman two children that's how we've organized our society and women say when they women say nothing men say well, we're lonely and she's like well you're lonely maybe you're lonely because you suck to be around <laughs> Then look at this. I date occasionally and nothing destabilizes these, these men more than when I say, hey, really enjoying the time together, but I never want to get married ever again. It blows their fork in mine. They'll be like, what? I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm the, the, the fork boy now, buddy. And a lot of women, she's talking about how a lot of women stay because there's nothing better out there. And y'all know this lines up with what I say. But you know what's better? Your bed, a vibrator, and a glass of wine. What we're seeing now with the trad wife is just a reaction. So as much as I'm like really annoyed with the trad wife stuff, um, I also kind of see it as a very predictable reaction to progress that we're making. Women 
um, leaving men who are exploiting and abusing them. She says it's a reaction. Progress and backlash always go hand in hand. She also talks about how the whole trad wife thing, just how all the ideas around what a womanhood is, you know, making women feel like the, if, they, if they don't need it, they have something, they have failed as a woman. And it's also a reaction to LGBTQ politics. And that's why we're having this really hard push back to like, I'm not, I don't disagree with the idea of like feminine and masculine. But what I'm saying is be careful of people who are really obsessed with that, especially dating coaches, especially male dating coaches. Please don't ever a male dating coach because a lot of them in the fe- female, like divine, feminine, and masculinity, it is literally red pill talking point. And this obsession with women have to be this and men have to be that. It's back to the binary thinking. So she says, if women were so happy with their life in the 50s, what we wouldn't have had the second wave of feminism, right? Like, I mean, uh, hello, Revolutionary Road, the thing I just did a whole hour long uh, video on. Those women were mis- not only what, what they didn't even talk about in that movie. We said oh, most of those like stay at home women in the 50s who, who were out like literally making like bomb, right? Like that 50s trad wife stuff was a reaction to uh, like the 40s where w- women were like literally doing men's jobs and doing them very well, right? And then, I mean, and literally, I didn't know this until I literally took feminism classes in college. And I was like, oh, well, I'll be damned. And I went and, and, and I watched all of the, the propaganda, right? The advertising and all that stuff. It was all about, all of a sudden, we had all these women. It's like, when they need us to do this, they're like, yeah, you know, raw, raw, go serve your country. Go out and make bombs. Do men's, oh, uh oh, men are back. Get back in the house, right? And all of the the advertisement was about these homemakers. That that was a reaction to progress. So anyone who may be freaking out right now, like I almost see, and, and um, I don't know who coined this, so please tell me in the comments if you know the extinction burst thing. Like, of course, meant we have the red pill guys, but one of the reasons why I'm not that afraid of it is because to me, I'm like, it's working. It it would be weird if they weren't in their dying breath being like women suck (laughs) right like like donald trump was a classic reaction to obama right like anytime there is i mean i that obama had plenty of uh problems i don't have to go in that in the video he was definitely not i mean you know you know some of his foreign policy is like whoa but anyway i never thought in my lifetime i would see a woman be elected as president and it seems like i probably won't not in the u.s at least they have women presidents all over the world, but in the U.S., I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it was a big deal to see the first black man being a president, right? What happens after that? Trump! Like, of course! So I just see, it's always like, right? I'm just saying this because I don't want people to be all, like, depressed when they watch my stuff. I, oh, I, need, I need hope to move forward. I need, I need it. Without it, I like, what's the point of any of this? Like, right? And as somebody who has a history major, it really helped me appreciate things more because I'm like, oh, wait, we've been through this before. This is what they always do. So this red pill stuff, as dangerous and scary as it is, and we, and, I mean, things are probably going to get worse before they get better. But to me, it's almost a good sign that it's working. I don't know. Like, I'm still very scared of these men and their influence, but the fact that they exist is a reaction to the progress that we're continuing to make. And them existing is one reason why and men becoming radicalized them is one reason why women were like okay i kind of felt like you hated me before but now you really hate me Bye bye die alone i'm prioritizing my peace and then some of her last thoughts you can't ideologically bootstrap your way out of a bad marriage that said i don't think divorce is a sign of failure or a bad thing i think it's a sign of success to say that this is not working for me and I don't want it anymore. Again, I really wish we wouldn't shame women for divorce. Whenever women, to me, like it's very hard to get a divorce. There's a big stigma. It's financially hard. It is very risky, right? Getting divorced is such, it is such a hard thing to do as a woman. And so when women actually go through all that effort and all that heartbreak and all of that work to finally say, I'm getting out of this. I see those women as really brave. And as a, you know, as, as the daughter of a single mom who was divorced, I'm telling you, I would not have had it been raised any other way. I really think that I got started on a foundation of men being decentered, 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, in, like instead of starting at zero, where it's like men, 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 I kind of st- got, got, you know, even though I had other things that kind of put me back, you know, uh, in terms of like childhood essay and blah, 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 that kind of set me up for like other bad things in terms of decentering men. I will always be so grateful to my mother for not having a man in that home showing me that this is what I'm supposed to do. I never had that in my home. Never. Honestly, that is literally one of the biggest gifts I've ever gotten in my life, me and my sister. So back to the original video. I want women asking a men that they're dating if you date men on a regular basis. Like, there's a way to do it. I want you, I want you to be really clear on why they like you. And those things that they like you, like that they like about you, better have nothing to do with you being nice, caring, good mother, that kind of crap. Because that is all about basically them thinking of like how you benefit them. You're nice. That means you don't ever complain about what a piece of crap he is. <laughs> or call him on his stuff. You don't challenge him, right? You're nice. To me, nice means you're a doormat. I don't want to be nice. I want to be honest. I want to be respected. I want to be loved. And I'm not going to get those things by just being nice. Like, I, I mean, you know, being a woman raised in the South as a white woman. Being nice. Ha, ha. And really just raging on the inside. Which again, I believe women will be uh, better to all, everyone they interact with. Anyone they have power over. As a white woman, I'm much more likely to be useful to society instead of a danger to them. Because of being full of rage and using the system um, to enact violence like my ancestors have done. I'm a much safer person to be around in general as someone with power who has been um, the villain Uh, as a collective in the lives of so many people if I'm not full of rage because I'm accepting stuff. I also think the more I free myself, the more I'm going to be a better friend to other people, the better job I'm going to do at work, the better, um, and I don't have children, but I guarantee you, if I was being oppressed by my husband, I would probably take it out on my kids, right? a lot of women take it out on their children. So I believe one of the most, one of the most important ways for me to be a person who contributes to society and um, is not a threat to other people is to do my best to not be um, controlled, manipulated, and oppressed by the men in my life. Whether that means just tapping out from dating them at all, or, you know, marrying someone who makes my life better and easier. But seriously, the I was the worst friend, the worst sister, the worst worker, the worst uh, writer and artist. I did nothing, nothing creative. I was the worst, the, probably the worst person to everyone in my life and in just the society in general when I was in that abusive relationship. I was so exhausted. I was so run down. I hated myself. I was full of anger, but I couldn't express that anger. I was not able to show up for anyone in, in, in any kind of impactful, helpful way because I was in survival mode, trying not to die. I truly believe one of my biggest um, challenges in my life is to make my political personal, right? Because for a long time I was a feminist, but letting men treat me like crap, dating misogynists, dating men who literally, a man who literally tried to take my life. It was so embarrassing to be living the opposite in the outside world as I was in my home. It's so, it's so humiliating to live like that. So that's when I realized I need to focus on my personal life in order to be the kind of um, feminist community member, family member, friend to everyone outside of the home. I was not put on this earth to put up with a man. And I never will, never again.